In a matter of days, Dr. Lee Wen Liang went from treating patients to becoming one. The 34 year old ophthalmologist diagnosed Saturday with the Wuhan coronavirus, dying less than a week later in the same hospital in which he worked. But if action had been taken when he and others started sounding alarms, the severity of the outbreak might have been understood sooner. Struggling to communicate, Lee spoke with CNN briefly by phone on January 31st. You could hear the hospital machines pulsing in the background. It was back in late December when Lee first warned friends on WeChat about a SARS-like disease going around. Lee sent a group message saying that a test result from a patient quarantined at the hospital where he worked showed a patient had a coronavirus. But hours after hitting send, Wuhan City health officials tracked Lee down, questioning where he got the information. Within days, they closed the suspected source of the virus, this seafood market, and they announced the outbreak. But instead of being praised, Lee got a call from Wuhan City Police. With Lee coughing too much and breathing too poorly to speak by phone, we asked Lee by text, how did you feel when this happened? I felt a little afraid, afraid I would be detained, afraid my family would worry, Lee responded. He agreed to sign this document, admitting to spreading rumors online and severely disrupting social order. It reads, we want you to cooperate with the police and listen to our reminder and stop the illegal act. Can you do that? Lee answered, yes, I can. In the weeks that followed, the Wuhan Municipal Health Commission maintained that there was no obvious evidence for human-to-human -human transmission, no infection of healthcare workers, and that the outbreak was, in their words, preventable and controllable. And with that, the people of Wuhan continued about their normal lives. Then came a sudden jump in infections. China's central government took over, scrambling to contain a spreading virus with a rising death toll. Chinese state media first reported that Lee was one of several whistleblowers silenced by police. Calls for Lee and the others to be vindicated grew online. China's Supreme Court even weighed in, adding, quote, it might have been a fortunate thing if the public had listened to this rumor at the time. But for many, including Lee and his parents, it was too late. They all contracted the coronavirus. Lee's condition declined rapidly. But before his death Friday, he witnessed the support of thousands online who considered him a hero. Late Thursday night, Chinese state media first reported Lee's death. The responses online reflected a profound grief and a deep anger. The two topics trending on Chinese social media were Wuhan government owes Dr. Li Wenliang an apology and we want freedom of speech. Both had tens of thousands of views before being censored. Soon after, state media changed its reporting, citing Wuhan Central Hospital, which reported Lee was still alive but in critical condition. And a few hours later, in the middle of the night, hospital authorities officially announced Lee's death. He was 34. David Cole for CNN, Beijing. For more now, journalist Yanying Chan joins me now from Hong Kong. She's also an honorary professor at the University of Hong Kong. Uh, so thank you for being with us. You know, censorship in China can be fairly nuanced and sophisticated. The government knows there's this need sometimes for people to vent, to express their frustration, to blow off steam. Uh, is that at play here, especially since this story of Dr. Lee's death was first reported by the Global Times, which is you know, considered very pro Beijing? No, I don't think the government can... Um censor all the outpour of outrage on the internet. It was like a state funeral online last night. People were um, making comments and, and, and expressing their grief. Now, note that the internet is huge in China. You have like almost 900 million people online. And, Almost 100 percent on uh, on mobile, and um, and they're also on WeChat, a, a very robust uh, social media tool. Um, and because the outrage and and, and it is so outpouring. So, so um, just, let me jump in. The government has but, to listen. I think. I hope. So just. Just to jump in, so what you're saying is that, they, that everything we hear about China's uh, censorship and the, the, the government control over what people say and, and do online, you're saying they can't control this particular instance? Well, uh, not just this one. The, um, yes, the control uh, is uh, very intense, extensive, and uh, especially under uh, Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping's power, 
Uh, but look, the internet and technology is a huge disruptive force. And when people are, uh, I mean, people are looking for outlets to express themselves. And even with the control, even before the death last night, mm. you have reporters, you have citizen journalists, um, just everyday people uh, trying to tell the truth, tell what's happening online. Um, so there's censorship, but there is a big uh, uh, pushback from the public. I'm just curious if you have a. We have this situation too with a lot of angry people uh, expressing frustration about the death of this doctor. You also have an unprecedented lockdown of almost 60 million people heading into its third week. You have so many people gathered in the one place for an incredibly long time. At best, they're skeptical of the information they're getting from government officials. That would seem to be more than enough ingredients for some kind of, you know, I don't know, unrest, if you like. Well, about the lockdown, I think people also understand the need to, to stop the transmission. Uh, of the virus, and um, so it's a very complicated picture. People are not entirely uh, uh, opposed to it. Actually, people supported it, and one government to do better, like deliveries of services, um, like uh, giving medical care. There's a lot of issues. So already, there's been a lot of uh, complaints and grievances aired online even before uh, last night. And um, so it's like a back and forth uh, struggle between the fact trying to get out and government uh, uh, attempt to uh, crush them. But also government is not just a singular and controlling force. You have the central government, you have local government, and, uh, but the internet is a great uh, liberating force. Uh, Yuan Ying Chan, uh, we're, we are out of time, so we shall leave it there. But thank you so much for, for being with us. Thank you.